Now we are going to start the fourth episode. This is the episode of pharmacological management of gestational diabetes mellitus. In this episode, we have Dr. Kanis Mahmood as the speaker. She is the in charge of GDM table at Burdham General Hospital 2. Madam, would you like to first give a brief on pharmacological management about gestational diabetes mellitus? Assalamu alaikum. We all know that gestational diabetes mellitus with pregnancy is a high risk pregnancy. Management of the patient with GDM should be multidisciplinary approach. It includes the obstetrician, gynecologist and dietitian. There are some key components in the management of patient with GDM, such as the counseling of the patient is more important. Second thing is the lifestyle modification, which includes the medical nutrition therapy and exercise. And last one is the pharmacological therapy. Lifestyle modification is an important component in the management of patient with a GDM. According to the American Diabetic Association 2022, see that the 25 to 80% patient with a GDM can be managed only by the lifestyle modification. Usually, uh, after two weeks of lifestyle modification, if the patient does not achieve the target glycemic control, then we advise for pharmacologic therapy. The pharmacologic therapy should include oral hypoglycemic agent and insulin. But insulin is the preferred pharmacological treatment in the most of the patient of the GDM because it does not cross the placenta and does not reach the fetus. An oral hypoglycemic agent, it includes the metformin and glyburad, should not be used as a first line of pharmacological treatment in the management of the patient with a GDM. I, I already mentioned the counseling is the important part of the management of the GDM patient. We counseling the patient, self-monitoring of the blood glucose level at least twice in a week at home. Patient should measure her fasting blood glucose level. Two hours after breakfast, her blood glucose level measured, measured her blood glucose level two hours after lunch and measured her blood glucose level two hours after dinner. If the blood glucose level is within the target glycemic control, then we'll advise the patient come to us or hospital at least two weeks interval. If the blood sugar is uncontrolled, we advise the patient should be come at hospital is more frequently. It may be one week interval. Sometimes we advise the patient, maybe ad advise the patient should be admitted in the hospital for only control of the blood sugar level, if the blood sugar level is uncontrolled. So by now we know that gestational diabetes mellitus, that is the GDM, is the first time detected diabetes during pregnancy. Dr. Kaniz, would you kindly tell us the pharmacological treatment options in a patient with GDM? Thank you very much. The pharmacological agent, particularly used in the GDM, oral hypoglycemic agent and insulin. But insulin is the most preferred pharmacological agent, the treatment of the most of the patient with GDM because it does not cross the placenta. That's why it does not go to the fetus. Regarding the insulin, I will, will, give, my, I will give some experience regarding the insulin. In, in our, um, insulin is usually given in different doses according to the trimester. In the first trimester, insulin is usually given 0.8 unit per kg per day. In the second trimester, Insulin is usually given one unit per kg per day. And third trimester, starting dose of the insulin, 1.2 unit per kg per day. Insulin usually, dose of the total dose of the insulin is usually divided. Two third of the insulin is usually given at morning in the fasting state. And one third is given at night. In the two third of the insulin, usually will give a two type of insulin, regular human insulin and intermediate acting insulin, usually given at the morning and the fasting state. At night, we'll give a 
one third of the insulin. In one third of the insulin, it includes the both intermediate and acting insulin and regular insulin, regular human insulin. At morning, the regular human insulin usually control the postprandial blood glucose level. That means the after breakfast, it control the blood glucose level. And intermediate acting insulin, it usually control the uh, blood sugar level after taking lunch. And at night, we give a both intermediate and regular human insulin. Intermediate in acting insulin usually control the fasting blood glucose level and regular human insulin usually control the blood glucose level after dinner. In our hospital and our experience suggests that we usually given the insulin in, su in such a way and another way we can you start the insulin at smallest dose regular human insulin at least initially four unit for three times before the breakfast before lunch and before dinner and advise the patient self-monitoring of the blood glucose level three days interval and control her blood sugar level until he he reached the our target glycemic level in according to the american diabetic association international diabetic federation also the ogsb suggests that the target glycemic uh, glycemic level should be fasting should be less than 5.5 millimole per liter one hour postprandial should be less than 7.7 .7 millimole per liter and two hours postprandial should be less than 6.7 millimole per liter that's why we usually advise the patient should monitoring her blood glucose level at home at least twice in a week as we all know by now that there are different interna international guidelines and different society also have guidelines regarding the management of GDM. Would you kindly let us know the recommended first line treatment of GDM? Thank you. According to the American Diabetic As Association, International Diabetic Federation and also the, our OGSB suggests that the first line of treatment in the patient with GDM is a lifestyle modification. It includes the exercise and medical nutrition therapy. According to the ADA, that means the American Diabetic Association 2020, suggests that about 75 to 80% patient with the GDM can be managed by only the lifestyle modification. So Dr. Kanis, can you share us your experience regarding the oral hypoglycemic agent in the management of GDM? Thank you. Particularly oral hypoglycemic agent such as metformin or glyburide should not be used as a first line of management the patient with the GDM because it crosses the, crosses the placenta and go to the fetus and causes the hypoglycemia of the fetus. But, it, but particularly in some cases, the patient with a polycystic ovarian syndrome or patient with a, any type of glucose in intolerance before pregnancy or patient with obesity, those are already taking the metformin. In particular, this patient, we can continue the metformin as an insulin sensitizer up to the 12 weeks of pregnancy. After that, we all should always switch over to the insulin therapy. So you're telling us that a patient uh, who is already on metformin uh, conceived and uh, should continue metformin up to 12 weeks of, of pregnancy. Thank you. So Dr. Kaniz, you have already mentioned about the management of GDM with insulin. Would you like to share what are the criteria when to start the insulin? Particularly after two weeks of medical uh, lifestyle modification therapy in the patient with a GDM. If the patient does not achieve the target glycemic control, that means according to the, what is the target glycemic control? We already mentioned that the according to the American Diabetic Association, International Diabetic Federation, on our OGSP also suggests that when the fasting should be less than 5.5, one hour postprandial should be less than 7.7, .7, and two hours postprandial should be less than 6.7. If the patient fasting is more than 5.5 or one hour postprandial more than 7.7 .7 or two hours 
postprandial is more than 6.7. In that case, we switch over to the, along with the lifestyle modification, we give the insulin. So you're saying that along with lifestyle modification, if the blood sugar level crosses your uh, limits, that time you may have to start the insulin. At first, the lifestyle modification, we try for at least two, uh, two weeks. After that, if your patient does not achieve this target of the blood glucose level, then we go for insulin along with the lifestyle modification. So, Dr. Kanis Mahmood, would you like to share what is the ideal frequency for uh, GDM monitoring? We already mentioned that, that the counseling is the important part in the patient, in the management of the patient with the GDM. We counsel the pa counseling the patient regarding the self-monitoring of the blood glucose level at home. We usually advise the patient at least monitoring her blood glucose level twice in a week. If the blood glucose level is controlled, patient should come to us or any hospital or health center at least two weeks interval. Along in the blood in the hospital, we usually do the fasting blood glucose level and postprandial blood glucose level. Along with the blood glucose level, check the blood glucose level. We'll do the hemoglobin A1C. It is an important thing. If the patient is diagnosed as a gestational diabetes mellitus in the first trimester, if we we'll do the hemoglobin A1C in the first trimester, we can give an idea whether patient, if the hemoglobin A1C is the more than 6.7, 6.5, which give, a, give some idea, patient might have a um, diabetes before pregnancy. And also, we usually doing the hemoglobin in A1C in each trimester of the pregnancy. If the blood glucose level is uncontrolled, if the blood glucose level is does not meet the target glycemic control, patient may, might come to us or any health center or tertiary hospital at least one week interval. Sometimes, if the blood glucose level is uncontrolled, we advise the patient should be hospitalized for control of her blood glucose level. So you're saying that uh, if the hemoglobin A1C is more than 6.5% during first trimester, she might be a case of pre-gestational diabetes. And you're also recommending that if the blood sugar is not controlled, uh, it's in the uncontrolled level and not meeting the targets, for the sake of the blood sugar control, she might need hospitalization. All know that the gestational diabetes mellitus is high risk pregnancy and it affects the both the mother and fetus. So tight blood glucose control is a more important factor for better outcome of the both mother and fetus. So you're saying that patient might need admission just for the control of, course, of blood because sugar. Because we know all we all know that the GDM is a high risk pregnancy. The when the blood glucose level is uncontrolled it affects the both the mother and fetus. Already our previous colleague already mentioned that there are several complications which occur, occurs due to the gestational diabetes mellitus in case of mother and fetus. For that reason, if the blood glucose level is controlled, we advise the patient for certain period in the hospital only for the control of blood glucose level. Sir, would you like to share your valuable insights regarding the pharmacological management of gestational diabetes mellitus? Thank you. The speaker has elaborated in details about the pharmacological management of GDM. As we all know that GDM is controlled by two different mechanisms. One is lifestyle changes and another is up till now pharmacologically where the lifestyle changes do not achieve its objective. Now so long it was a confusing world of insulin. There are various types of insulin, duration of action, onset of action, and all were different. Newer insulins are also coming in the market now. So it is a confusing area. And in case of pregnancy, we want that the control of blood sugar should be as meticulous as possible. So she has given 
a detailed account of the proper control of diabetes in GDM cases by the rational and appropriate mix of different insulins. I think we have gained quite a bit of knowledge about the proper use of insulin from this lecture and as newer and newer insulin will come into the market, maybe we have to modify the strategy in future. Now we are concluding the fourth episode that is the pharmacological management of gestational diabetes mellitus. Dr. Kanis Mahmood has elaborately spoken about the insulin management which is very important for our patients with gestational diabetes mellitus. Thank you, madam. Podcast gives us the freedom to listen to what we want and when we want and how we want. Practitioners can tune in on their preferable time as their time is limited. In addition, multitasking and podcast can also go together as podcasts are easy to listen to while practitioner is doing other things. Gestational diabetes mellitus is a very common concept and is easily understandable for all. As the global rate is going up in case of gestational diabetes mellitus, it is becoming one of the leading causes of maternal and neonatal morbidity and mortality. Listening to Bexidoc Talk podcast of Zangaini about gestational diabetes mellitus will gain a new perspective. With this hope, I'm Dr. Naushabha Tarno Mahatab signing off.